Happy New Year to you all. And this is the first lecture of 2016, which is 14th Institute Lecture. And I welcome each one of you to this lecture on behalf of the Institute Lecture Series Committee and on behalf of the Institute. We are extremely privileged to have Dr. Virender Kumar Rana, whose detailed introduction will be given by Professor Devendra Bhavan Hetzabal. May I request Dr. Rana and Professor Sandhu to please come on dais. While coming to dais, I request them to garland Malviyaj is bust. इससे पहले तो सर ये बड़ा कम मौका मिला होगा आपको। थैंक यू सर। After becoming Indian Institute of Technology, we have started one institute lecture series. So far, we have had 16, this will be the 16th lecture in it. Two of them were non-institute lecture, and this is 14th institute lecture. We do have a motto of educate to innovate and innovate to change. And today's speaker is probably one of the perfect example of that. You will see when he delivers his lecture. We are again proud because he is one of our alumnus, a distinguished alumnus who has contributed meaningfully to the world of structures, specifically to bridges. Some of his works might be available on YouTube of discovery. Now, I now request Head Civil Engineering, Professor Devendra Mohan, to kindly introduce the speaker of today. Professor Mohan, please. Honorable uh, Director, Honorable Speaker for the 14th lecture in IELS, all esteemed colleagues of the dais, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, I am thankful uh, to Professor Sarma and the committee of the Institute Lecture Series for giving me an opportunity to introduce a very illustrious alumni of Presently called IIT BHU, erstwhile one of its constituent colleges that is Banaras Engineering College. As I mentioned, I just repeat once again, I feel very, very happy while I put forward before this August gathering a few introductory words about one of these illustrious alumni, Dr. Virendra K. Rana, who is 14th speaker in this institute lecture series. As a matter of fact, in professional world, Dr. Rana does not need an introduction. Dr. Rana was born on January 25th, 1940, and he had his Bachelor of Science in Civil and Municipal Engineering from Banaras Engineering College, Banaras Hindu University in 1961. We know that afterwards this Banaras Engineering College and other two constituent colleges merged together to form Institute of Technology Banaras Hindu University, which afterwards got converted or upgraded into Indian Institute of Technology Banaras Hindu University. Dr. Rana broke the university record by standing first as well as first class naturally and for a long time university record was broken by, by his outstanding performance in BSc Engineering. Dr. Rana had his master degree that is MS in 1964 and PhD in 1966 through a highly esteemed Commonwealth scholarship which was granted by the government of Great Britain from the renowned Imperial College London in England. His association has been very prestigious like BIC, MIC, EC Engineering from London and Association of Professional Engineers Ontario, Canada. He is recipient of highly prestigious SV, jo SV Joshi Citation and award for the best bridge and structural engineer of 2010. Currently he is director at ITNL, which 
belongs to IOL and FS group and he is there as director in from January 1, 2009. Slight correction. I was. I am no more there. I am now with the World Bank for the last two years. Okay. CV mein was that was sir. Okay. Ha, according to CV, it was, okay, you have corrected it. Thank you, sir. At present, he is also working as consultant to the World Bank for training the engineers of the Assam Public Works and Roads Department in the state of Assam under the ASRP World Bank Finance Project. He has been consultant and senior expert to other such organizations like African Development Bank and other many global organizations. He is Professor Emeritus as a very old, more than a century old College of Engineering at Pune, Maharashtra. He has worked as a senior expert and consultant with the United Nations as well as the World Bank for many years in a large number of countries. He has also worked as a consultant to the private sector as well as to various governments in different countries around the globe. He has also worked as technical advisor to the government of Bahrain for completion of Bahrain Qatar Sweeney Bridge. It's a bridge, very long bridge, uh, in sea itself connecting Bahrain and Qatar. 40 kilometer long bridge in the sea. He has very rich experience of working in more than 18 countries, as I mentioned earlier, and has authored highly acclaimed engineering books, nine in number. His total number of publications are around 80. This is in nutshell about this great personality whom we are going to listen as today's speaker in our institute lecture series. So all of us feel thankful that you have spared your valuable time to share your knowledge and experience with us. Now I request you to please start your lecture. Thank you very much, sir. Good evening, ladies and there is a lady I thought somewhere. Am I right or wrong? Or am I seeing things? Anyway, um, I was born in November 1940, not January, and I'm no more with the ILFS, that was long back, and perhaps he has been able to see my old CV. Um, that's fine, but I'm so kind, as I'm so grateful for all the kind words. I hope I'll be able to live up to the expectations of you all. Um, there are two major sea links. One is a 26-kilometer-long 26, 26 one connecting Bahrain and Saudi, which is completed right from negotiations through investigations, through analysis, design, construction, supervision, maintenance, and everything. The other one is a 40-kilometer-long, the one that connects or will, is proposed to connect Bahrain with Qatar. 40 kilometers. That is still in the stage of construction. Anyway, that apart. Today, uh, what I'm going to talk to you about, we had mentioned that we'll be talking about the Nepal, recent Nepal earthquakes and the infrastructure issues there too. That we have decided, I think you're going to mention that about tomorrow morning? Yes. That will be tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock? Yes. Where? Here? Here. Wherever you decide. Here. Here. Here only. So, but today we will talk a little about a brief history of development of bridges and structure of concrete. Now, I'll very quick, uh, I was told the director, he has to go somewhere at 5.15 or something. So just about that time, I'll quickly show the last few slides which are of extreme interest and then you can, uh, then you can proceed. Um, very quickly, bridge design and construction have come a long way during the past few centuries and much, as they say, water has flowed down particularly in the past hundred years or so during which more bridges have been built than in all the previous centuries. The primitive bridge building perhaps started with a trial and error process as can be expected. In the misty, in some misty morning of a prehistoric past, a human trying to cross a stream probably saw a fallen tree across it and when he tried to perhaps clamber over it, it might have broken and dropped him in the drink. So he thought really hard and felled a fatter tree. Remember the word fatter, tree. And this took him across the stream. That day, the first primitive single span wooden beam bridge was thus conceived, designed and built. That's long, long ago. That might have been the case. But likewise, the first arch bridge 
too was built probably similar. If you read the history of civil engineering, it is, uh, it is fascinating and you will see a lot of this background. The first arch bridge too was built probably similarly about 4,000 years ago in the Euphrates Valley of Mesopotamia, present day Iraq. Over the past 125 years or so, the understanding of structure behavior unfolded cascadingly. Master analysts like Navier, Dishinger, Timoshenko, Goodyear, then subsequently Toroha, uh, Morandi, uh, Guillaume, these giants, the likes of whom engineering world had never seen, came on the scene. And the tools for structure analysis sharpened, strength of materials began to be understood better, and the art and science of structure analysis and design took roots. Meanwhile, better construction materials developed and advanced from stone to timber to brick to wrought iron to cast iron to mild steel to reinforced concrete to high strength steel to composite construction and to pre-stress concrete. And accordingly, spans began to become longer as we progressed into higher strength steel, high tensile steel and high strength concrete. That the flexural strength, we're talking of history, so we have to see the uh, turning points that the flexural strength of a section was proportional to the cube of its depth, but only linearly to its width, was perhaps the, one of the greatest revelations ever in understanding the structure efficiency. Width versus depth. To trace the glorious history of bridges from the beginning, we should perhaps divide it into two periods, as it is customary to talk about history in terms of periods. The first period would be before concrete, the stone to steel age, and the second, the one in which we are living, is the one after concrete was born. Stone and timber were the traditional building materials since the start of civilization. Stone arches used mostly in early bridges date back to the days of Babylon. Romans learned the art of building arches from the Etruscans. These arches were semicircular. Flat arcular arches appeared in full glory during the Renaissance period. Although the first theory of arches came to be established as late as 1695 and was used in practical design only in 1729, the optimum profile of the stone arch had been found very early by artist builders intuitively and has changed very little since because of the line of thrust. Sequence of arches as they were then, and even now we copy them, sequence of arches, wide pairs do look definitely better than the narrow ones. Sequence of flat two-hinged arches. Back in 1502, this is important, back in 1502, the great man, the Sultan Bezedet, Bezezet, Bezedet, whatever, of Turkey, he was a visionary. He wanted to cross the 240 meter gap between Istanbul and Pera across the waters and he wanted a single span structure. He could think of nobody better than Leonardo da Vinci, the great, great master. He was, his services were requisitioned. He came, he saw, he investigated, he drew his sketches, took his money and went back home. It was agreed that this will be built. But this visionary, Sultan, he gave up the idea because he didn't find the technology of the day to be able to construct something of 240 meter single span with the construction methods and materials available then. So the whole project was given up. The sketches got lost. This is 1500 something. It's only about 452 years later in 1950 something that an art critic by the name Sands. He was an art critic. He attended, he, in, he attended the exhibition of Leonardo da Vinci's sketches and drawings. And he saw these sketches, he fell in love with them, bought them, took them to his friend who was a civil engineer and explained to him. They both liked it. They went to the authorities, convinced the authorities and then as recently as 2000 something, they built a footbridge across E18, Expressway 18, connecting between 
between um, uh, Copenhagen and something we'll, uh, I'll explain to you. It's in wood. It's been built by the Mughalian group, the timber specialists, and they have vowed that they will build these kinds of, this kind of bridge in all the continents. Now, Sultan Bezajet, I was mentioning, where well, John Sand was the name, and then he met his friend, this is what they have built. Now in this you can see the, the direction of flow of stresses. You know, you can measure strains, you cannot measure stress. Be clear about that. Nobody can measure stress. You can measure strains. But you can see the direction of the flow of this stress trajectories and the placement of the load masses is absolutely to the last single cubic centimeter. We were given the job at Imperial to do uh, a 3D final e element on this, done. And we found that the material used was so exact and this is 500 years odd back. Now this is the something like the pearl of perfection and this is across